Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. In this ninth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on an introduction to PHP, I want to take it a step further and show you some advanced ways that you can use functions. And to do that, what we're going to do is create a web page where you can create a starting lineup and add players to that. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto website developer.com slash store. You can purchase all of my video tutorials over here. Uh, this video tutorial will be up as soon as I complete it. Uh, it'll be $20 and it's something you can have to keep a permanent record of this. Um, as well, it goes to support me creating additional video tutorials, keeping them free, keeping them on YouTube. You get an HD version, iPod version, and it's also delivered by CloudFront Amazon. So it's uh, delivered uh, digitally and in no time. And just before we get started, if this video tutorial helps you, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. I read all the comments and we'll get back to you. If you have a question, please do not send me a personal message asking me questions. Uh, it makes it a little bit difficult for me to respond as well. Sometimes the questions are repetitive with other users. So if you post a comment, ask the question, I'll respond to you. And it also helps other people who might experience similar problems. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I do check that out and you'll see it in my YouTube analytical reports along with my estimated earnings that I publish every month. That said, let's get started. Um, just going to close this window, head over to tutorial9.php. You'll see that I've got set up. Two arrays are being printed here. This is my post array and this is my session variable. Um, the session variable is something that we're going to use because we want to actually retain these values from a user and actually start developing this lineup. Typically what you would do is take those values, add them to a database. Um, but for the sake of this nice simple use, what we're going to do is use the session variable. Uh, it's a variable that's persistent across, uh, you know, you leaving and coming back to a website. It's not permanent. Uh, a person can delete it themselves uh, because it's in your browser cache. Um, and if you're curious about it, you can just go ahead and do a quick Google search. Not going to be the focus of this, uh, but just wanted you to be aware that we're doing that. Here's our form where we have a position that we can choose. You know, we can enter a name. It's not pretty, but it'll do the functionality that we need. We can submit the form and we can reset the form. If we reset it, the lineup is wiped out and we can start from scratch. You'll see down here, we're printing the lineup. Uh, and right now we don't actually have this functionality enabled. So let's go ahead and look at the code that we have. Tutorial9.php, you'll see I'm defining a BR tag. I do that for pretty much every video tutorial, but I don't think I actually use it here. Session start is a function out of PHP, which is going to allow us to use the session uh, variable itself. So that's why that's there. Don't worry about that. And then I've got this line require, um, and I'm passing in a file name. What this does is the require function out of PHP makes it so that this PHP code, this file is loaded with tutorial 9.php. So anything that's in that file, I'm able to use. The require means that PHP has to find it. And if it doesn't, it's going to throw an error. I could have used the keyword include, uh, and that would throw a warning if it's not found, but I need these functions for this file. So that's why I've used require. Um, additionally, it's in the same file folder, tutorial nine functions, uh, dot ink is in the same as tutorial nine dot PHP. And so that's why there's no, uh, that's why it's just the file name. If it were upper folder, it would have been dot dot slash. But again, if you're curious about that, you can do a quick Google search about uh, manipulating files on your server. Last thing I want to note, you'll notice it, uh, ends in a dot ink. That's just a convention. It's, you know, short for includes, uh, it could have been dot PHP, but, uh, the include means that, uh, the file doesn't actually run by itself, at least in my eyes. Uh, and that's why it's just a bunch of functions. So you see here, I've got to do, I need to update my lineup. I'm going to do that by calling the functions in tutorial nine. Um, but then you'll see I've printed the post and session variables. And then I've got this form, which actually posts back to itself. And then down at the bottom, you'll see I've got your lineup and I've got a to do to print the actual lineups. Let's go ahead and look at the code that I've created to do all of this. Tutorial nine functions .inc, I've put all the functions in here because it makes it a little bit cleaner. This tutorial nine.php file would have got pretty crazy. So I'm trying to separate my logic from actual, um, you know, form itself. Um, this isn't the best example, but typically you would want to, you know, separate those two things. And so that's why I'm doing this. Links it a little bit more modular. Uh, but again, those are more complex concepts. I should save this, go back over to tutorial nine functions. You'll see I've added uh, comments to describe what I'm doing here. Um, and then this at param, this is a, I would say a keyword for, uh, you know, doc gen. Um, where it'll take a parameter and it'll actually identify that these variables are something that have to be passed in. Um, and this should actually be post. So I've got my update lineup. So what this is going to do is first and foremost, I'm going to submit the form. I'm going to call this function update lineup. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the form's actually been submitted. So if it has, uh, the form's not empty, we'll go ahead and we'll run a bunch of code. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see, has the reset button been clicked? 
you'll see here I'm using uh, if post submit is equal to reset, and that's because, oops, that's because the tutorial nine code down here defines the reset button, value reset, but there's uh, still a submit button, and the name is still submit, so it comes in as one thing. So it's just one thing that I can check, so I keep doing that. So if it's reset, we're just gonna take the session variable that is passed in by reference. You remember passed in by reference in the previous video tutorial means uh, I can just manipulate the variable, and that's why I've named it the same way. Uh, and we're just gonna reinitialize it to an empty array. Um, and that's just gonna reset the array. Otherwise, we're gonna add to the team. So before we go and add to the team, I just wanted you to note, uh, I've passed in the session variable by reference, as I mentioned, and I've, re I've named it the exact same way as uh, tutorial9.php, the, the session variable here. I'm gonna pass it in the same way. And that's just for myself to know that this is passed in by reference, I'm actually gonna be manipulating the session variable. Uh, and so I don't wanna give it a different name and kind of confuse myself. The post you see here, I didn't name it the exact same way as the actual post variable in tutorial9.php because I'm not doing it by reference. So I wanted to note that for myself. That's just when I come back to it. Um, it's not something you have to do, but um, I don't know, maybe a best practice. So if all is good, I've added somebody to the team. I wanna go ahead and call this function add to team. And I'm gonna pass in the session and I'm gonna pass in the post. It's gonna take both of those. And you'll see down here, I've got function add to team, exact same comment setup. Uh, add to team is gonna take the session, set up the exact same way because it's coming in by reference, the post, and then I'm defining a lineup here and I'm providing a default value. This is so that later on down the line, if I wanna create multiple lineups, my code can handle that. I can pass in a lineup variable um, and it can be a different name and that can come out of the form. A user can do that. Once we get into add to team, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if the session is empty. If it is, we're gonna just initialize it to an empty array and make sure we don't get any errors and that the array is set up and ready to use for our first use. Then after we do that, we're gonna have session and we're gonna pass in, uh, session's gonna be an array. So we're gonna pass in lineup as, an array, as a, a key, but it's also going to be an array. And so its first key is going to be the post position, uh, the position that's provided by the actual user when they submitted the form. And then we're gonna take the name and associate it with that. And we don't have to return anything because the session is being passed in by reference. So we're all good, we can go ahead uh, we would save this and go back over to our, our page here. And so left wing is going to be Peter. Let's test this out. And you'll see we've got a problem here because uh, the session is not actually printing here. So let's go see our code, see what's going on here. We'll walk through some things. First and foremost, we are printing the session variable, so that's good. And you'll see here to do, we didn't actually call our function uh, startup. So that's uh, that's a problem. So we'll just grab this go to tutorial nine and the to do is gonna be wiped out with the function call update lineup and post is actually gonna be the post variable that's submitted. So now if we save this and we go back over to our page, we should be able to go Peter print and we're, we've got a call time. Okay, so yeah. What we shouldn't have done is had this ampersand in the, in the call, the function call. So we just remove that, save that. We should have the error gone, but you'll see that the array was updated anyway. So we had lineup, which is an array and left wing is Peter. So then we'll go uh, right wing, we'll add Chris to right wing. And you'll see that. And then we'll go center, we'll add Susie, who's lying beside me snoring. And then you'll see that we're slowly adding to this array. And if I click reset, you'll see that the array is now empty. I've gone ahead and I've done that. So we know that our update function is working properly. One thing I should note is we just took the values that the user submitted for granted. Um, they obviously could be uh, malicious and entering some code that we don't want them to enter. So we could have a function that sanitizes that before we actually add to the array. Uh, that's maybe something to do for you. It's, uh, you know, beyond the scope of this, because we're just looking at how we can use functions, uh, not looking at the rest of the stuff. But just keep that in mind. Now what we need to do is we need to actually print out our lineup at the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll actually take in the session variable, but we're not going to actually change anything with the session. We just want to grab it, see what's in there and print it all out. So we're not gonna pass it by reference and I'm gonna denote that for myself by just using uh, just session variable uh, as an underscore, just like they did with the post. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize an output um, variable. That's just gonna be an empty string. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna add to it and you can only add to a string that already exists. So I'm gonna take the session variable and remember I said I could have multiple lineups. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all of those are captured. So here for each session as line and, and then lineup, right? So this is going to be the key and then the actual array lineup. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print 
the line, so the name of the lineup uh, in an H2, and then I'm going to put a line break. And then I'm going to take that lineup array and I'm going to iterate through that as well and look at the position and the name, and I'm going to print those out uh, with BR tags as well. Then I'm going to return that back as output to the function uh, to the function call down here. So what I'll do is I'll just go print and I'll go print line up and I'll pass in the session variable and just make sure that my syntax is correct it was print lineup. So I've saved this. I can go back over to my page and I'll uh, add a new person here because I need somebody in the lineup submit and you'll see that we're getting the name lineup right remember that's the default and we've got left wing Peter and if I go and I add a right wing Chris I can add a center Susie and submit and we'll see that all of this is being printed this is actually our print R that we're looking at but you can see the lineup is being properly added to down here so what I if I wanted to to finish this off I would just go and I would remove all of my debugging stuff here save this go back to my page and we'll just add, you know, Bailey and goal, save that. And you'll see that I've got my lineup. It's printing up properly. Um, and that's it. So you can see why this is pretty powerful. Um, I've called these functions. I've got one line in my actual tutorial 9.php file, and I've got one line to actually print out. This makes it a little bit cleaner. Somebody if was going to maintain this, uh, it'd be a little bit easier to look at. And you can see all of my functions would be in here. Again, if you wanted to take this a step further, some of the options that you could do to practice, um, this options uh, list here is all of my left wing, center, right wing goal. What you could do is you could create a function to look at and return this option list. So as I add a left wing, it shouldn't be returned as another option because I already have a left wing on the line. Other thing you could do is you could create another form uh, to actually take in the line and then update your functions here so that rather than everything being added to line up, it could be added to line one, two, three. You could also create different teams and go buck wild. So those are just some ways that you can use functions. A uh, nice way to kind of separate them. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. We looked at, again, passing in by reference, returning values, uh, and clean code. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Let me know as well. If this tutorial helped you, give it a thumbs up. And we'll see you for the next and final video tutorial in the series. Thanks very much for watching.